It's fair to say that for the previous 10 to 15 years, financial markets have been rather simple for us. The S&P 500's earnings have almost doubled during the past 10 years, and the price has tripled, representing the highest federal funds rate in history. The current situation was only 2.5, making it a favorable period for businesses and investors. Due to the low cost of money, it has been simple for firms to grow and expand their valuations, as well as for investors to profit. By the end of 2019, it seemed as though anything you bought was rapidly increasing in value. But of course, the bubble burst and the epidemic brought about global catastrophe. The financial markets crashed. Corporations went out of business. The recession was long and gloomy. And the investing world was rocked. In reality, the world's central banks intervened, printed trillions of dollars, distributed them to businesses and consumers, and merely pushed the problem down the road. However, now that we've caught up to the problem and inflation is at roughly 40-year highs, the Federal Reserve is no longer susceptible to the strategy of printing money to save us. Interest rates have recently increased, severely limiting both residents and enterprises' access to capital. So slowing down the economy and, to put it mildly, giving the financial markets some trouble. The stock market is looking quite wobbly. Cryptocurrencies have been destroyed. Real estate is declining. Well-known corporations are suddenly failing. And real estate prices are dropping. Investors are selling up out of concern that the long-awaited deep recession is finally here. However, despite everything that has already happened and everything that will happen over the next year or two, this may be the ideal time of your life to advance and amass riches. Consequently, let's discuss why this moment is so important and how you might take advantage of it. People shouldn't possess stocks at all since they are constantly irritated by price changes. If you're going to make poor decisions because your stock drops, you shouldn't even hold stocks. More than most people understand, investment involves a lot of psychology. In fact, the basic principle of investing is to purchase low and sell high. But in practice, the majority of investors actually do the opposite. They first buy high and then sell low. Although they don't mean to, when times are tough, fear, uncertainty, and doubt simply scare them away from the market. However, as experts like Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Monish Brian Guy, Spare Phil Town, and all these others would say, the best time to invest is when the market is severely down. The better, the lower the admission point. Listen to this. Over time, we have been net buyers of equities. Who wouldn't like to purchase a stock at a cheaper price? Most people, including the majority of your listeners, are savers who should want the stock market to decline and want to purchase at a lower price. But they seem to get a greater sensation when equities are rising, which is extremely odd. It's a pretty intriguing occurrence. And the key factor contributing to this backwards mentality is that the majority of people don't have specific investing objectives and haven't made a long-term investment time commitment. Therefore, when the economy is in trouble and the news is bad, people tend to just flee the risk of immediate suffering, which is a poor course of action. Look at this for a history of the bull and bear markets in the United States since 1926. The recessions are the huge out bars. The bull markets are in blue. The bear markets are in orange. There have been 12 bear markets and 15 recessions since 1926, or 12 if you count the 2020 decline. Consider that there were a total of 14.7 years of bad markets, and that there were also 75.4 years of market bull runs. These terrifying events that signal the end of the world occur relatively infrequently, but as you can see, if you have the guts to invest during these times, you'll frequently be richly rewarded. Just look at these returns since the Great Depression ended. You made 265% over 4.4 years, and then following the next bear market, you made 43 in 1.8 years, 210 in 4.1 years, 908 over 14.8 years, and so on. I adore this graph that Tony Robbins included in his book, Unshakable. 
It shows what would have happened if you had placed your money where your mouth was during each of the worst bear markets in recent memory. Just a year later, 20, 30, 40, 50 now, while it's impossible to predict the market bottom precisely, and you probably won't achieve exactly those returns, it does demonstrate the size of the opportunity presented by a bear market. For instance, you would have earned around 9% on your investment if you had made it at the market's peak before the 2020 surprise collapse. But you would have gained nearly 60% if you had made the investment at the market's low just a few weeks later. The difference your entry point can make, and keep in mind from the chart that these large declines are usually preceded by smaller drops. 14.7 years of bear markets and 75.4 years of bull cycles are extremely uncommon. These opportunities to endure some discomfort in the name of greater good are extremely rare. Recessions offer great possibilities, but how can I take advantage of this chance as an investor without making a costly error? Well, the first step is to stay informed about what's happening in the market so you can recognize when these chances are available. And the second step is to correctly implement your plan, whether it be passive or active investing. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions about investing. Let's return to the video. So returning to the video, the first stage is unquestionably to keep yourself informed. But it's crucial that you also appropriately implement your investing strategy after that. As we all know, there are two basic approaches to long-term investing dollar cost averaging, and long-term value investing in the vein of Warren Buffett. The majority of investors, it is safe to assume, will choose for dollar cost averaging. They're going to pick dollar cost averaging, which is just taking your money and spreading it across the entire stock market using something like an index fund spy, for people who don't know what that is. They choose a market tracking investment and from there, investors will spend the same amount into that market tracking investment at regular intervals. One example is the traditional S&P 500 index fund, which is the largest index fund in the entire globe. The money you invest in that index fund, which distributes your funds throughout the entire market, is therefore $2,000 every six months or something similar. Therefore, this investment technique is truly intended to remove all emotion from the process while still allowing you to benefit from the market's long-term performance, which is roughly 10% yearly for the S&P 500. But you don't have to worry about your investments, read annual reports, or do anything else of the sort. Of course, at first glance, this strategy doesn't sound like you're timing the market and specifically taking advantage of a stock market crash. But in reality, you are. Because let's face it, when the stock market is extremely high, $2,000 won't buy you as many shares on October 9, 2007 as it will when it is low. Your first investment of $2,000 got you 12.78 SPY shares. But a year later, while the market was falling, it got you 20.5 shares. It's brilliant. Naturally, you'll buy a lot more shares when the price is lower, and a lot fewer shares when it is higher. But nothing about your investment habits has changed. Since passive investors can take advantage of a major market crash by simply continuing to do what they've always done, I really like dollar cost averaging. However, many investors prefer to have more control over their portfolios and prefer to invest in individual companies in the manner of Warren Buffett. They are aware of their significant competitive advantages, talented management teams, and of course, margin of safety pricing. I'm not going to go over that entire technique in this video because it will take a lot of time. I did want to touch on how active investors can make sure they won't lose money when investing in this uncertain economic climate. But that will take about 8 hours because that is precisely the topic of introduction to stock analysis. The first thing we need to consider is what is actually happening right now that is causing businesses to suffer. Currently, the biggest issues are high inflation and rising interest rates, which increase costs, make it more expensive to service debt, and reduce consumer spending. So how can you be sure that a business will be able to survive in such a setting? 
First of all, the company you're considering must have price passing power. We've recently talked about pricing power, which is the ability to raise prices without experiencing a decline in sales. For instance, many companies are currently forced to lower their pricing as a result of customers spending less on discretionary things. But companies like Coca Cola have such potent competitive advantages. This ability to boost prices without experiencing a significant decline in sales, in fact, in Q2, they increased drink sales by 8% and concentrate sales by 4%, is essential for success during an inflationary environment. Coca Cola can easily pass on rising expenses to customers while avoiding negative consequences on themselves. So that's the basic characteristic that fights inflation. But another important thing to think about at the moment is the rising interest rates, which of course have the main effect of making it more expensive to refinance debt. Therefore, keeping your company's debt levels low is the greatest approach to ensure that it survives this period well. For instance, Google has a debt to equity ratio of just 0.05. They have no debt at all, which is even better because they earn more interest than they pay. A more general factor is simply considering the business strategy. As Peter Lynch would say, it's very difficult to go out of business if you don't owe anything to anyone. Thus, low or no debt is vital. Do you think this company strategy will stand up well in these challenging economic times? For instance, supermarket businesses often fare better during recessions. Since it is evident that people will continue to purchase necessities, people will continue to pay for their home or auto insurance, even if they may be a little more strapped for cash. But as rates rise and customers have less money to spend, the opposite will also occur. There are many things to think about, but for active investors, it's important to consider business models, pricing power hour, and debt levels. While for passive investors, it's best to just keep on. Keep on, stay strong, and go long. You know, travel companies might suffer from holiday plans, might be thrown out the window as the cost of living eats up more discretionary income. So there are many things to consider. Overall, though, gentlemen, that's why recessions offer such huge possibilities. And hopefully, this video has given you the wisdom to seize them to the fullest. Hope you have learned something from this video. What are your thoughts? Comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the like button and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell for you to be updated on our latest videos. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Want to learn more and be more financially literate? Click on the next videos we have in our channel, showing on the screen right now.